Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about another agent building framework called Crew AI. And essentially what they do is to provide you with the ability to get uh, specialized agents to collaborate in solving specific problems. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Crew AI's agent framework to build out a sales report that is going to be querying Salesforce, pulling in opportunity data, and creating a sales report which would include uh, some graphs and some charts. So the concept behind Crew AI is quite similar to the Langchain sort of agent framework. I believe it's actually built on top of the Langchain agent framework, but it I think is much more simplified in a way that you know kind of abstracts a lot of the sort of um, more complex things that you have to do with Langchain. So it's it's basically, um, you know, a little bit of an abstraction of Langchain. Now, this is the documentation, so feel free to go in there and check things out. Um, essentially, you have the concept of an agent. An agent basically has a set of tools that they can be assigned. Uh, they have some inbuilt tools which they have uh, provided. So you can see some of them like Google search and scraping a website, uh, PDF rag and all of these types of tools that they have here. But they also have the ability for you to create your own custom tool. So we have done exactly that. We're using uh, the tool decorator. This is very, very similar to what you get with Langchain as well but this is slightly um uh, less complicated so to build this out we are going to be doing a few things so we're going to be using crew ai of course so you're going to be installing uh crew ai as well as the crew ai uh, tools so that is actually in the requirements of txt so if you uh get access to the repository which i'll be adding uh in the description of this video, uh, you can actually just do a pip install requirements uh, txt to get all uh, the dependencies installed. Uh, the other thing that you're going to be needing is simple Salesforce and your Salesforce credentials. Now I've added uh, the, the, the set of credentials that you need. You need an OpenAI API key, the Salesforce username, password, security token, your instance and instance URL are the only things that you really need uh, for this one. So now to do this, um, just a few things. Um, basically, like I said, our agent is going to be running a query in Salesforce, pulling all the opportunities from our Salesforce instance, and it's going to be using that to create um, a report. But this report is going to be a very detailed report. It's going to include um, charts and graphs. And I think that's where like Crew AI really excels is being able to facilitate that uh, feedback loop between agents that allow them to actually solve these types of problems. So for us here, let's we'll start by just simply creating a Salesforce tool. Here we create a tool that is fetching all the opportunities from Salesforce. So I already initiated my Salesforce client. Um, I created like a comprehensive Salesforce assistant recently. So you can go into that video if you want more details about all of these setups. Uh, but essentially you create a Salesforce tool this tool simply just queries the Salesforce opportunities and returns all the information, including the account name as well, and uh, just returns that inside a list. So it's a list of opportunities, uh, which includes the opportunity name, the account name, the stage, the close dates, things of that nature. Those are all returned back um, as a summary. Now, the next thing we have is a, a graph charting tool. So basically we're just simply using matplotlib here. Uh, to take a list of Salesforce opportunities and create a set of chats. So we're creating uh, simply two chats, one total sales over time, and we're also creating opportunity stage distribution. So we're just basically just plotting the graph for these two uh, charts. Now, this tool is going to be used by one of our agents to create these charts and is going to be used also in creating the report itself. So we have these two charts. And the next thing we're going to do is to create our agent. So in crew AI, they just simply have this agent class where you could define what the agent does. So here we have two agents. The first agent is a sales analyst agent, and this agent basically analyzes opportunities and visualizes data across the entire sales pipeline. Verbose is set to true, which is 
simply means that we want to see sort of, you know, the interaction, how the agent is thinking about solving this particular problem. We've set memory to true. And there's this concept of a backstory. So this basically just gives you the opportunity to um, enhance the instructions you're giving the agent. So uh, in the backstory here, you know, you're equipped with analytical skills and a knack for visualization. You can delve into Salesforce data to draw out key insights. So you're basically giving this agent even more context or more, um, you know, instructions of what it should be doing. And then the next thing we're giving it is tools. So this is very, very similar to what you would do with an agent in Langchain uh, or even other sort of, you know, agent frameworks like Autogen Studio, <laughs> I almost forgot that. And then there's the allow delegation, which means that we can also kind of pass this uh, responsibility on as well. Now you have a report writer agent and this agent basically is gonna compile everything that the analyst has written into a sales report. So here we're saying that the backstory is about flair for synthesis, narration, uh, you know, can combine analytical solutions and, and visualizations. I actually generated all of this stuff from ChatGPT, by the way, just to make it simple. So you could give ChatGPT an idea of what you want your agent to do, and you can generate pretty cool, uh, compelling backstories here. So, and just one thing to note, like each backstory, like each line of your backstory should be entered in quotes as well. Now this agent doesn't need any tools because it's just simply compiling what has been written by uh, this agent. So when this agent delegates uh, the information to the report writer, it's just meant to use that information to uh, create uh, the report. Now, finally, you wanna set up tasks. So remember what we're doing. We set up tools, we set up agents, and now we're setting up tasks. Now, tasks essentially allow you to define exactly what each agent is going to be doing. So in this case, as an example, this task is around analysis and chatting task. So basically, it's about extracting Salesforce uh, opportunities, analyzing the, the data, and creating visualizations. So this basically explains that this is exactly what's intended. Now, you're also going to be in a task, you're expected to define what the expected output for the task is. So in our case, we want a markdown document with the analysis and the chats covering the entire pipeline. And we're passing these tools as the tools that are required for this task task and we're also saying that this is the agent that is responsible for this task so in this case is our sales analyst and finally you want to decide how the output is going to look in this case we want our output to be a markdown file and that's why we're saying out output file and we're, we're setting it to pipeline analysis.md so that's what we should expect to see when uh, this particular task is completed now finally once the task is done um, uh, the second task is really the final report, right? So we want to have a final report here uh, containing all the information uh, that has been written by the report writer. This task does not require any tools. It's just basically taking information from the pipeline analysis and feeding it into a final sales report. Now, finally, to just orchestrate your entire crew, you bring them together with the class called crew. And here you're joining the agents, the tasks, and you're using um, a new method called uh, process or a new attribute, sorry, for this class called process. And process.sequential means that we are doing this in sequence. So there are two sequences. Uh, there is an analysis and chatting task, and then there's a final report uh, task. So this sequential thing and shows that it goes in this particular sequence. So that's it. That's really it. <laughs> it. And I think this is really cool because it just simplifies creating agents. I actually like it so much. And then there is the results is equal to salescrew.kickoff. So this is how we kick off our stuff. Now, if you had any specific inputs, let's say you had a query, like let's say you're doing some searching, we're doing some query, and then you enter those inputs here. For us, we're just simply re returning a, re a report, um, just you know, doing the analysis So for everything. So we're not specifying any uh, input here and we are printing the result and that's it. That's really all you really need to do to, to actually get your thing running. And all we need to do is to go in 
go ahead and hit Python app.py. And now we can go ahead and view exactly how the agent is going to solve this. So you might be very familiar with this uh, agent executor chain from Langchain. So very, very similar. And you can see the very first thing is doing is that it's starting the analysis by fetching all the opportunities from Salesforce. That's the very first thing is doing. So entire pipeline, pulling all that information. So you can see it's run that report. It's got all that information. Now, the next thing you should be doing is to try to plot those charts, right? So that that should be the next thing it's attempting to do. So it's going to take some time to do that, that piece. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and take a look. Uh, so it's going through the process. It's uh, attempting to create these charts. And once the charts are ready, we should get some sort of uh, response from the agent. So let's give it a few seconds here. All right, so another thing has just popped up here. So now I have fetched all the opportunities. I'll generate a comprehensive sales performance chart for this. And it returns all of this. And it says no valid opportunity data available for chart generation. And it says that the chart generation was unsuccessful due to invalid data. It seems like the opportunities data is not in the expected format. I'll delegate the task of converting the opportunities uh, data into the report expected format to my coworker, uh, the report writer. And this is pretty cool because, okay, it couldn't solve the problem, but it says, okay, let me delegate this issue that I found to my coworker, which is funny. Um, so again, it's going to uh, tell the coworker that, look, this is all the data and, you know, try to, try to make sense of it. So the current format data is incompatible with the chat generation tool we're using. We need to convert this data into a list of dictionaries. I see each containing the amount, stage name, close date for each opportunity. This new format is easier to work with and will enable us to generate the necessary visualizations for our sales performance data, which is interesting. I mean, so th and this is what I think about agents having these types of conversations. If you were doing like a one-time um, operation, what typically happens is that when it runs to a, into an error, um, then you are sort of left, you know, dry, like there's nothing you can do about it, but here it has that ability to self correct. And I think this is really apt with, you know, tools like Devon and some other agent frameworks that are coming up, having these conversations really change the way, um, your agents perform. Now we can see here, it actually went ahead and did some converting the opportunities into expected format. So it changed the way our data was initially brought up, brought in and formatted it into what would be much easier to work with. And then once it did convert uh, all of that, you could see on the left hand side, some of the chats were st starting to get created. Uh, but just looking at what the conversation looked like. So based on my coworkers response, I need to convert the opportunities data into a list of dictionaries with keys. And then it says, um, you know, the coworker is basically doing all of that work. And then it wrote some code on the fly to perform all those actions. And then it's using all of that information to create uh, the report. So I am unable to execute Python code. So however, to convert data into, you can use the following code. So it does that. Unfortunately, I'm, able, I'm unable to execute it. And then it tries to um, do some it actually goes ahead and executes it. I don't know why it, it mentioned that it wasn't executing it. And now it starts to write the entire chart. Now, keep in mind that this is probably going to cost you some money to do this, I'm sure. So just keep that in mind. But let's look at the final result, the results. I mean, this was just fascinating that it was able to do this. So first, it generated the, the chart. So this is the chart showing um, opportunity stage distribution. It also had something around uh, total sales over time. So you probably the chat. Now I don't know how, how accurate this chart is. Uh, and then the other thing that it did was to generate a bunch of files. So it generated this pipeline analysis MD. And if we look at that, let's just open it up here so we can see that it generated a full report, including images. And as you can see, the chat shows distribution of opportunities across it helps identify this and then says the chats were generated using a subset of opportunity data due to constraints in data processing. Therefore, the insights should be considered illustrative rather than comprehensive. Okay, so it's saying that some of the data wasn't completely accurate. So uh, it had to sort of use only data it could clean up. 
And then when we look at the final reports right here, we can see the entire report on this side. So I'm just going to remove this and let's open up um, our final sales report right here and just look at the preview just to see what it looks like. So again, it went started with an executive summary and analysis and it's gone ahead and written the entire thing. This is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm going to be diving a little bit deeper into crew AI and looking at other use cases, but I think in my first few uh, looks at it, it, it seems pretty awesome. And um, yeah, so we'll be looking at seeing what you're building with crew AI, what type of crews you put out there. And I really like the name as well. It's pretty cool. Uh, until next time, do have a great one. Cheers.